Welcome back everybody to a new mini-series I'm going to be rolling out over the course of the next few weeks known as Master the Elements, where I will be dedicating a single video to each element in the game, giving you an in-depth look at everything you need to know about subclass verbs, important interactions and build synergies. I want to preface that a large amount of information presented in these videos comes directly from the Destiny Data Compendium, an incredible resource for all things technical which I will leave a link to in the description. So with all that out of the way, today we're starting things off with the arc element. But before we start, I want to briefly shine a light on the Crotazen speedrun tournament happening on the 11th of November created by members of the Destiny 2 speedrun panel hosted by EvanF1997 and CB Grey. I will be competing in this event alongside a host of other creators so if you're a fan of the channel I would highly encourage you to catch the action on my and many others Twitch channels plus there will be a significant charity incentive where all proceeds will go to the Bungie Foundation. The link to the tournament discord is in the description which contains everything you could possibly want to know. Hope to see you there. Now back to the video. Elemental Verbs Amplified is the first of four elemental verbs present in the arc subfamily and it is intrinsic to all arc subclasses. There are several ways of becoming amplified depending on your class, but one that they all share is by getting kills from arc sources. Specifically in this scenario, any arc kill will progress a hidden counter that once full will grant you the buff. Red bar enemies grant 25%, orange bars 50% and yellow bars give 100% progress to the counter. In general though, this won't be the main way you do it since each class has its own unique way of becoming amplified that's normally more straightforward than this. In terms of what the effect actually does, does, there's quite a lot to unpack. Being amplified gives you five, yes, five passive effects for a duration of 15 seconds that can be refreshed. Number one, you gain an intrinsic plus 50 to your mobility stat, so if you're going for a triple 100 build and are getting amplified a lot, bear this in mind. Number two, you gain 33% increased slide distance. Number three, you gain an intrinsic plus 40 handling to all of your weapons. And number four, on top of the handling, you also get a 0.95x handling duration multiplier. And finally, number five, you gain access to the speed booster effect. Speed booster is an additional effect that's tied to being amplified that is activated after sprinting for two and a half seconds. While you have speed booster, you sprint 12.5% faster, slide 50% further, jump 25% higher, and you gain a flat 15% damage resistance. Furthermore, even if you lose amplified, you can maintain your speed booster provided you never stop sprinting or don't wait more than two seconds between sprint activations. Becoming amplified also enhances certain abilities, such as granting 200% class ability regeneration rate on Hunter, provided you're using the flow state aspect, a healthier juggernaut shield on Titan, or a rapid fire arc soul on Warlock. Moving Moving on, we have Ionic Traces, the only other arc buff besides Amplified. An Ionic Trace is a small bolt of energy that travels along the ground seeking out the player. Once collected, you gain a small amount of energy to all of your abilities, and fun fact, you don't have to be on arc to receive the benefits. Even if you're on solar, for example, collecting an Ionic Trace will still grant ability energy. A default Ionic Trace grants 12.5% grenade energy, 12.5% melee energy, and 15% class ability energy. I say default because as you'll see later, this can be enhanced by a certain exotic. Ionic Traces can be created in a multitude of ways, such as via Spark of Discharge, Spark of Ions, or the Cold Heart Exotic Trace Rifle, to name a few. Much like being amplified, collecting Ionic Traces can also trigger certain effects depending on your class or what weapons you're using. Warlocks running Electrostatic Mind will become amplified when collecting an Ionic Trace, and if you're running the Delicate Tomb for whatever reason, your next shot after collecting an Ionic Trace will deal 30% extra damage and apply the Jolt debuff. Speaking of, we're now going to cover the first of the arc debuffs, Jolt. Enemies that are inflicted with Jolt will periodically emit a burst of lightning that change to other nearby enemies, making it an extra excellent ad clear tool. Jolt can be applied from many sources, but to name a few, you've got the weapon perk Volt Shot, any arc grenade using Spark of Shock, or the third rocket from Two-Tailed Fox. Jolt can also be refreshed if you reapply a new instance of it to an already jolted enemy. Now we move on to the final arc verb, the second of the two debuffs, Blind. Arc Blind functions very similarly to disorienting grenades in that any enemy affected by it will be temporarily stunned and incapable of shooting or tracking the player. Blind can be applied via flashbang grenades, titan seismic strike, or through fragments such as Spark of Brilliance and beacons. Important interactions. Now that you're familiar with all of the arc elemental verbs, it's time to talk about some important interactions you should be aware of when using an arc subclass. First of all, any overload champion affected by the Jolt debuff will become stunned. In a similar vein, unstoppable champions will also become stunned if affected by arc blind. Furthermore, only one instance of Jolt can be applied to a target at a time, which is why if you were in a raid group with multiple gathering storm hunters, you would stagger each super rather than cast them simultaneously in order to avoid the damage loss of only one Jolt being chosen. Next, I want to briefly touch on some notable fragments that you should heavily consider running in any arc build, starting with Spark of Beacons, which makes it so that any arc special weapon kill will create a blinding explosion, working very nicely alongside Forbearance, Iterative Loop, or Path of Least Resistance. Spark of Resistance is borderline mandatory since while you're within 15 meters of at least three enemies, you gain 25% damage resistance completely for free. Spark of Shock and Spark of Ions pair very nicely together because now every time you throw a grenade into a group of ads, you become a literal ionic trace printer. Finally, Spark of Amplitude makes it 
so you create an orb of power on a double kill while amplified, which for any Ark Hunters out there is an excellent choice since it allows you to become a total orb printer. Build Synergy in this final section, I want to briefly highlight certain gear options that can enhance or directly benefit from ARC subclass traits, starting with the Cold Heart Exotic Trace Rifle. Sustained Fire from Cold Heart creates an Ionic Trace every 2 seconds, which makes it an excellent add-on to any Elemental Ability Spam build, since every couple of seconds you're getting a decent chunk of all of your abilities back, provided you're actively shooting enemies. As mentioned earlier, kills from Delicate Tomb also have the chance of creating an Ionic Trace, which when collected enhances the weapon's damage, but to keep it real, this weapon is mid at best, and because it shares the same slot as Cold Heart, the competition is pretty fierce. The newly added X Dyrus grenade launcher is pretty weak on its own, but the catalyst allows you to become amplified on kill, which at first glance sounds pretty weak until you realize this works on all subclasses, letting you try silly stuff like this. Moving on to exotic armor, Hunters, your best bet is to run Assassin's Cowl for the fantastic survivability and health recovery. Titans, you're spoiled for choice with many solid options like Armamentarium, Heart of Inmost Light, Point Contact Cannon Brace, Insurmountable Skullfall, and of course, Cuirass of the Falling Star for boss encounters. Warlocks also have a pretty clear winner in the form of Fallen Sunstar, which doubles the ability energy gained from picking up Ionic Traces, but Vesper of Radius is also a very solid option for harder content. While I'm sure there's a couple things I've missed, I hope this video has given you a good look at the Arc subclass as a whole. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now dear viewer.